Welcome back to another engine review. Today we're going to be looking at the Toyota Corolla. It's the SE package and it's a pretty nice looking car. It's a 2016. It's got a variable valve timing which is it seems pretty common for cars nowadays where it has a mechanism in the camshaft to change the speed of the camshaft and the open and close of the intake valves as you speed up and slow down. It's supposed to help on gas mileage and emissions and everything. So this car in particular has a 1.8 liter 4 cylinder, an I4, and this car has a dual overhead camshaft otherwise known as DOHC and you'll see that here when we take off this engine cover you'll see two uh, camshaft position sensors and as with all my other engine review videos I'm going to be going across the engine and picking out some of the uh, obvious and not so obvious parts uh, just to explain them and show you where they're at, show you where they are at so if you need to repair this part and you're not really sure exactly where it's at in your car hopefully this video will show you what you're looking for and let's let's get started here in this little box if you pop it open you'll find the air filter and this little component right here is your engine control unit or your ECU and it just helps your car properly maintain a good uh, air to fuel ratio mix next up you got your fuse box and inside you'll find various fuses and different relays down here you got your battery and up here you have your blower motor housing where it's gonna hold your uh, the blower for your HVA system. Over here you got your brake reservoir and then underneath you have your brake master cylinder. Here's a closer up of the, the brake cylinder and the brake reservoir where your fluid comes. You see that brake cylinder there? When you press your brake, brake pedal a rod goes in that cylinder and compresses the fluid along this, these two lines here. Here you see just a jumble of lines so you got two lines coming from the brake cylinder and then four lines coming from this um, this uh, anti-lock brake system module here I, I just drew a couple arrows to indicate that the two red lines are the lines coming from the brake cylinder that we were looking at earlier and the four purple lines are the brake fluid lines that go to the actual brake pads or brake calipers and the in the purple lines the the idea of the anti-lock brake system is that the brake fluid is pumped so rapidly more rapidly the rapidly than you could pump the brake pedal and it just allows you for smooth steering while you are uh, pressing on the brake pedal really hard so since we're here uh, I'll point out a couple things in this picture the high pressure line is going to the uh, expansion valve where it will uh, flash freeze and then be available for your AC unit and then here's your low pressure line coming from your AC unit after all the cold air has been blown off of it, blown off of it, and it's going into your compressor, where it will get, get compressed again. And then, real quick, here you have the serpentine belt and the alternator. But we'll get back to these in a little bit. So we're going to come back over here to the right side, and I took off the uh, engine cover, and we're going to start here with the air filter box. And the first thing that we're going to look at is the mass airflow sensor. This just measures the amount of air flowing by it before it gets to the throttle. And here's the direction of the airflow. And next we have the positive crankcase ventilation um, PCV, uh, just the, this valve right or this line right here going into the direction of the airflow. So every single uh, combustion engine is going to have blow by and basically that means air is going to be blowing by the the valves and there's four valves here in this engine it's an I4 it's going to be blowing by and it's going to be going down to the bottom of the engine and this air is going to start to build up and it's got to escape somewhere it's just uh it's basically just hot air there's not really or maybe a mixture of fuel because of the fuel injectors but it's very little fuel that should get by just the really the air so there's got to be a place for this to go and the best place to put it is well right back into the engine and most cars do this or combustion engine cars do this by just adding it back to the uh, the airflow that's flowing into the air intake manifold so here's another piece of tube that belongs to the PCV system and this one's going to extend all the way back to the back of the engine block 
and the the actual PCV valve, um, which is pretty simple to replace, and uh, um, it'll extend there behind the engine block, and it's just uh, another piece of the hose to the system. So next thing we're going to look at is the evap solenoid valve, and this takes the uh, the vapors from the gas tank and mixes it with some air and allows it to burn off in the engine and this was uh, established I think in the early 90s just because before that they just allowed the vent the vented they vented the fumes from the fuel tank just to the air so now they actually take the fumes from the fuel tank and through this valve and then you follow this line down here it goes to the throttle body and then they just burn off in the in the engine I'm going to move down here to the throttle body and just show you something um, that not a lot of people really know or recognize. These, these two little hoses right here are from the radiator system and hot coolant will flow across the uh, throttle body, a little plate down there, and it will condense any frost that builds up in the um, or moisture that turns into frost during the winter around the butterfly valve in the throttle body plate and it actually catches the butterfly valve and kind of makes it stick so the um, the hoses there allow it to melt any uh, frost buildup. Alright so we're gonna freeze frame it here and explain what's going on here. Um, I just put some numberings to uh, all the electrical uh, pieces. So we're gonna look at one through four first and that's the spark plugs or uh, more specifically the spark plug ignition coils. Five, six, seven, and eight are the fuel injectors down there at the bottom. Uh, and there's four of them since there's uh, four valves in the engine. And then right below the fuel injectors is the fuel rail. And that's usually kept anywhere between, I found, 100 and 300 psi. Um, next, we're looking at number nine and 10. And this is what I was telling you that I knew it was a dual overhead camshaft because you can tell that there's two sensors and they're basically located right above where the uh, camshafts would be uh, would be in the engine so after 9 and 10 we got number 11 and just because of the shape and size of it and some of the research that I did I'm pretty sure that's the oil pressure sensor um, you can check me on that in the comments and if, if you have a if you know exactly what it is you can let me know but I'm pretty sure it's the oil pressure sensor and then you just have some ground wires here at number 12 and 13 so hopefully that little uh, bit there especially helped you out if you were looking for uh, a certain item on your, uh, your Toyota Corolla engine. Or if this engine happens to be in any other car, hopefully this, uh, this helped you out a little bit. So here is the, uh, here's the alternator right there. Here's just a close-up of the air intake manifold right there. And uh, we're going to freeze frame it here and point out a couple things. Here we got the expansion valve where the high pressure and the low pressure port kind of meet together. They kind of exchange some heat and then here you just got the where you add the oil and the dipstick and the oil you're supposed to, oil you're supposed to add is the 0W20. We're going to come down here a little bit and we're going to look at another part of the AC unit and that's going to be the dryer and that basically just dries the air once it's been uh, compressed and then gone through the radiator and it just takes some of the moisture out here's the coolant reservoir and then right next to it you got the radiator cap and again the radiator cap is a pressure regulating little mechanism and as the um, the engine heats up and cools down the coolant will expand and contract and then if there's any overflow it'll just go into the coolant reservoir tank so we basically have explained everything else uh, over here. Here you got the ABS module again. We're going to go back over to the right and then kind of pan in front of the engine to the left and uh, point out some things and then we'll be, uh, we'll be finishing up. So here you got a couple things in this photo. First you have the starter there at the bottom and some of it's hidden. It was kind of hard to, uh, hard to find but that's where the starter's at. And then you got this uh, metal casing right here or housing and that's the transmission body. Next you have the upper radiator hose and it's coming from the engine and it's hot coolant and then uh, it goes into the radiator and cools down. We're going to come over here and we have the AC compressor 
And then also in this picture you have the lower radiator hose going into the water pump, which you couldn't I couldn't really uh show you here in this video, it was kind of hidden. Come over here and you see the compressor a little bit better. You can see you can see some of the coolant reservoir fluid. Um the compressor down there with the serpentine belt attached to it. Here here you get a close up snap of the uh of the alternator. And you also have this tube going right here, and again, this is the low pressure AC line that I was showing you guys earlier. And then again, here's the alternator, and then the alternator can, has connected to it two electrical clips. And uh, the first one, that little clip down there, is from the battery during the startup. That's what gives it its power to start up, and then it turns the serpentine belt. And then the little clip on top is for the dash light and as the motor is running then it uh, gives its power supply from that little guy right there so that was the 2016 Toyota Corolla well that wasn't too involved or too in-depth but hopefully that helps you guys out a little bit helps hopefully it helped you on your uh, your project that you, that you gotta do here in the near future if you like that please subscribe and uh, check out some of my other videos and uh, currently I'm running a giveaway for a camera, so go ahead and check that video out on my channel.